Mrs. Manning, where were you when the ship struck the iceberg? Um, in the steerage, in the steerage class. You were emigrating to America? Yes, I was coming over here to my sister. If I may ask, how old were you then? I was 16, going on 17, be 17 in October. When did you first realize how serious the trouble was? Oh, I didn't until I got to this country. I, I thought it was part of the trip, to tell you the truth. I, I didn't realize that there was any danger. You didn't realize there was any danger? No. I thought that that was a pretty hard way to get here, but I, I, I didn't really think it was as bad as it was until after. When the alarm was sounded, what happened? Well, I, I was asleep at the time, and I, I thought then the ship had landed. So I thought we were here, in this country. Then you went up on deck? And then I went up on deck, and then we were told to go down, that there was a piece of ice on deck, and that when they get it off, it, uh, everything would be all right, to go down and go to bed. How did you escape? Well, we were on, standing on the steerage, third class, they call it, and um, then we couldn't get up second. And of course, then there was one man with us, and he was our guardian angel, and he said, for God's sake, let the women up. So at that I got up and then you second. Got, mm -hmm. And then you got into a lifeboat? And no, then I had to go to first cabin. The lifeboats were only going from first cabin. So there was a man on the second deck and he asked me to go on his shoulder and I climbed over and then I got, I think it was the last boat that was going out. Did you take it? He let me on because there was too many on the boat already. But you got into the boat. But I said to the man, I'd like to go with my sister because there was a neighbor with me and I thought he'd feel it. Because I didn't want to lose the crowd. I didn't really think it was any danger, but I thought I'd miss them in the dark. You know, it was very dark. Did time. you see the ship sink? Oh, yes. I was looking at it sinking when we were in the lifeboat because we were in the lifeboats for nine hours. And then which ship rescued you? Carpathia. Carpathia picked us up then early in the morning, about nine o'clock or something. I think it was about nine o'clock in the morning. Mr. Slocum, I believe you were in charge of the Turkish bath on the Titanic. I was. And where were you when the iceberg hit the ship? I was in bed. And when did you first realize things were wrong? Well, naturally the fog woke us up and uh, everybody got to their feet and uh, I went into a little passage and I met the second steward, which was Mr. Dodd, and he said, for God's sake, get some clothes on, get up on deck. I said, what's wrong? He said, I don't know. So, of course, we, everybody got, I had a coat on a nightdress, and we got up on deck, and everybody was most cheerful. When did you first realize how serious things were? I didn't think it was serious because I didn't think it was possible a big ship like that could sink. And uh, everybody was busy and they was lowering the lifeboats and the crew were marvellous. Everybody was cheerful. And how did you escape? In the last lifeboat. And I didn't want to go. And then of course you realised that things were very serious. Yes, I did. And did you see the ship sink? I did. It sank very quickly. That must have been a most dramatic sight. It was, because you could just see the lights going down and down. Did you hear the music playing? I did. Almost till the end? Till the end, I heard them play, you know, um, Near and I got to the end. Near and I got to the And uh, I, met, I met a steward, and he said, you are troubled of this, and it was a baby. So I took the baby, and then when they lowered the last lifeboat, I didn't want to go. And they said that one of the other stewards, of Mr. Wheat, he was helping lower him, and Mr. Murdoch, he was the chief steward, and he, shouted, he was shouting out, ladies, children and women first. They was marvellous. And you took the baby? I took the baby, and I didn't want to go, so they said, come on. And I went down in the last lifeboat, and there was, I think there was 72 in it. And you could hear the ice crash in the, the sides of the boats. You saw ice all around you? Oh yes, crashing the, and the water, the, the ocean was as smooth as a pond. 
And you were in the water until, uh, you were in the boat until the daylight? Next, yes, yeah. bright daylight. And uh, then we was brought on to New York and the Lapland brought us back to Plymouth, the survivors which had to come back. So, then of course we was kept there a little while and then brought on to Southampton. Of course that was very sad because everybody thought you knew somebody who was lost and I had so many friends on there and uh, you couldn't tell them anything. There was no impact as such. It was just like jamming your brakes on a car. And uh, that was that. She stopped. We had a porthole open and I looked out and the sky was clear, the stars were shining, the sea was dead calm. And I thought, I don't know, I couldn't understand it. So I came out of my cabin and I thought, well, I'd go forward. And I went forward to the well deck on the starboard side and I could see ice in the well deck. There's no sign of iceberg then because it passed us. And the lights were shining on the water from the portholes. No sign of damage above water line. And of course, what had happened, we slipped over the iceberg. And although she was supposed to be unsinkable with a double bottom, the iceberg had cut her from forward on the starboard side to the engine room, right through her two bottoms. And we had orders to get the lifeboats out. And of course the order, the same old order, women and children. And we swung the lifeboats out and gradually filled them up. First boats were away on the port side. The first boats away didn't have many passengers on board. They were afraid to go down. There was a 70-foot drop to the water. And they didn't think she was going to sink. And a few of the first boats on the port side got away with half filled. Don't forget, we had 16 lifeboats and uh, they each carried 50 and if they'd been filled we could have saved 800 whereas we only saved 500 so you can imagine there were many seats in the first lifeboats vacant um, then i had orders to uh, go down the storeroom with a gang of men and get all the biscuits we could find well, when we got back up onto the boat deck, we couldn't get near the lifeboats. Some people were scrambling to get in and being pushed back. By that time, she was listing very badly to port, and we couldn't get the starboard boats down. But before I got my life belt on, I met a, a young couple, and uh, I can tell you her name. It was a Mrs. Clark. They'd spent their honeymoon in France, and we'd picked them up at Cherbourg. And uh, she, she was having trouble with her life belt. So I fixed that on to her. And I said, I think you'd better get into a lifeboat. And there was one in the port, on the port side. So she said, no, she said, I don't want to go there. I don't want to leave my husband. So I said, well, it's just precautionary measure. You get in, your husband will follow later on. And I got her away, and that was that. And then I picked up my own life belt and put it on. Then the third class passengers were coming up. There were 700 of them. And they swarmed the decks and filled up the decks. And I thought, well, I'd done all I possibly could. I'd helped them all I could. And I thought, well, now I'll uh, go up and get out of all this scrumming and go on the poop deck and she was sinking past then and all of a sudden she lifted up quickly and you could hear everything crashing through her everything that was movable was going through her and then she went down and seemed to come up again so i thought well now i'm going to leave and uh, i was hanging on to a board we had two boards starboard port which said keep clear of propeller blades and I was hanging on to one of these and I was getting higher and higher in the air and I thought well now I'll go and I dropped in I had a light built on and I hit the water with a terrific crack and luckily I didn't hit anything when I dropped in there were bodies all over the place and then I looked up at the Titanic there was 
propellers were right out of water, the rudder was right out, and I could see the bottom. And then gradually she glided away, and that was that. That was the last of the Titanic. I didn't want to die, I mean, and I didn't see much chance of living, but I was gradually getting frozen up. And um, by the grace of God, I came across a lifeboat and they pulled me in. And there was a fireman dead in the bottom. And there was about a foot of water in this boat. There, were, um, there was another man who, try, who was trying to, he seemed to be trying to get away from it again. I don't know what was the matter with him. They were tied in, tying him down. And the rest were women and children. And I, I sat on a seat and uh, who should be, I sat next to Mrs. Clark. The, the, the girl I'd put into a lifeboat. And she said, uh, the first thing she said, where's my, have I seen my, have you seen my husband? So I said, no, I haven't. But I expect he'll be all right. Anyway, I was pretty, in a pretty bad way then, as you can imagine, frozen solid almost. And she wrapped me round with a cloak. She had some sort of blanket or a coat on. Anyway, I think uh, she probably saved my life, I don't know. But uh, I saved hers. At least I think I might have done. I think I did. And she saved mine. Then, first light, the uh, Carpathia came along. The Carpathia was about 7,000 tons, and they were going to the Mediterranean, absolutely loaded. And uh, they took us all on board, took us to New York. And that was that. I believe you've even got a watch that you were wearing at the time when you went into the water. Yes, yes, but uh, I couldn't afford anything better in those early days. Here it is. That says 20 past two. What time was it when you went into the water, do you think? I think about two o'clock. I think it lasted. It was frozen up like I was. I think it lasted for about 20 minutes in the water. Does talking about this incident bother you like you have been today? Talking about it? I should probably dream of that tonight. Have another nightmare. <laughs> You'd think I'm too old for that, but you'd be amazed. You lie in bed at night and the whole thing comes round again.